Welcome back everyone to Montgomery County's Engage at Home, brought to you by the County's Caregiver Support Program. We have a special guest today from Florida. Laurie, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, thank you so much, Lily. Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Lori Ann Roth, and I am so excited to be here to talk about uh, journaling. I wrote a book called The Journal Book, Your Journaling Journey, and it's going to be so exciting to talk to you about that today and how you can journal at home. Thank you. So Laurie, it's great to have you here today, and I know that you're going to share some amazing insights that are going to help our folk up here in Montgomery County who are at the moment staying at home. So how did you get started with journaling? Well, Lily, it actually started when I was 12 years old. My parents took us to uh, get groceries. I had two sisters, so they left us in the car. You could do that back then <laughs> as I was 12. And I went to read this book about horses and I opened up the book about horses and there were no words. And I had no idea it was a journal. So I took out a pencil and I just started writing. And I wrote in that horse book, which turned into a journal. And I started, when I, like I said, when I was 12. So journaling could be, well, and I've been doing it for a long time. I'm 57 right now. So y'all do the math. And that's how long I've been journaling. And it's for all ages. Wonderful. That is a wonderful story, Laurie. And I like the fact that what you demonstrate is that this is, can be very organic, very natural. So what are some of the benefits of journaling? Oh, there are so many benefits of journaling. My first benefit is stress reduction. For me, when I start writing in my journal, all of my angst and anything that I had in me just goes whoom, right to that page and I get it all out. So there are all different types of journals that you can use for that, even night journals. If you can't sleep at night, journaling will help you sleep at night. Believe it or not, journaling also can help you lose weight. Not that we have to lose weight, right? But it will because uh, Weight Watchers even suggest that you use journals and write down every single thing you eat and they say that helps you lose weight as well. It can also help you with an exercise routine, just writing things down. Journaling has so many benefits. Uh, besides stress reduction, losing weight, you can also use it to be organized. A lot mm -hmm. of business people use journals to be organized in their work, knowing what they do. And even the day-to-day, -day, even to-do lists are a type of journal as well. And my favorite type of journal, though, is a journal that you can use to build your future, to create your future, mm -hmm. to get things that you would really, really like. And I call that an opportunity journal. Ooh, this is, this is wonderful. So wonderful. So I'm now going to pass the floor over to you and really have it that you wow our uh, viewers with all different sorts of journaling and how they can make this happen in their lives. Thank you. Great, thank you, Lily. I'm excited to share this. And I know that we're sitting at home doing nothing in, and especially in Florida, I can go outside in sunshine and write in my journals, but Montgomery County's nice now. Just to let you know, the, the weather's coming out, but let me tell you journals. My first type of is just a regular journal. And in my journal, I have the dates, first of all. I write down the dates in my journal, if you can see that. This is a journal that I've used before. Write down the dates and then just writing and it doesn't have to be nice. Let's say I have a journal at home right now. You don't want to go out to the store to get a journal. You can just open up a computer, open up Word and just start typing. A lot of people think, well, what am I going to write about? Believe it or not, the internet has tons of things about. If you just Google anything, it'll come up with something. If you Google journal prompts, and journal prompts will come up with a lot of different questions and they answer the questions. So I have a regular journal. Other types of journal, another one of my favorites is a gratitude journal. Uh, this is one of my gratitude journals. And in the gratitude journal, what I do is I write down five things that I'm thankful for every single time I open this journal. Some people should write in your journal every single day. I don't agree with that. I think you should write in your journal whenever you feel like it. That way you don't feel pressured to journal. But when you do feel pressured or stressed, 
Then you can write your journal and just feel really, really good. As I said, my gratitude journal, just five things that I'm grateful for. And I just don't write the names of them like my husband or my dog or my house. I write down details. Really grateful for my husband because today he blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever it is that you're grateful for. And just put a little bit of detail in there as well. And do it whenever you want to for your gratitude journal. I find finished writing in my gratitude journal, I feel so happy. And that's another benefit of journaling. Journaling can actually be happier, especially the gratitude journal. Another uh, journal I have is a prayer journal. And in my prayer journal, I write the date that I said the prayer, prayer, and then at the I put when it was answered, because it's answered, whether it's yes or no, it's always gonna be answered you know, after some time. So I just write this for, um, you know, please let my best friend's mother get over sickness right now. Help my friend uh, get the job interview that uh, wants. Uh, she's doing an interview tomorrow. That kind of thing. So prayer journals are great as well. Another type of journal uh, that I have is um, a quote journal. And every time I think of something, and yeah, every time I think of something brilliant, I write in my journal and a little quote or something I think about, or it could be something that somebody said that stuck in the head. And then I write about that. I also use my quote journals uh, later to help me with um, more journal, which is kind of fun. Oh, let's see. I also put my goals in a journal. So a lot of times people would put goals in a journal. So I write down my goals for the year, my goals for the month, whatever my goal is. Another journal I have is a mirror journal. And I believe miracles happen every day. I really do. But a miracle journal is anything that happened that I consider a miracle, I'll write down in a journal. For example, I work for myself, got a contract, and I put it in the contract. I'm so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I put it in. Oh. The journal I want to tell you um, also that helps you make money, I, I didn't tell you journals help you make money, but they can, is my money journal. My journal is, is that every time I get something, every time I win something, every time I get money, I write it in my journal. And I try to do this every single day. And I think about something that I was given, something that I won, uh, money coming in. Of course, if it's a paycheck, I'll put it in the journal. But if it's something that's, you know, somebody gave me a bottle of wine, I'm like, yes, or, or I'm tickets to something. Not that we can go now, but yeah. So whatever it is, I'll put that in my uh, money journal. I'm gonna save the best for last, and that's my opportunity journal. I call it opportunity journal because it's similar to the one that Queen Liba used in that movie, The Last Holiday. It's an old Christmas movie. I think LL Cool J was in it. And her character created this possibilities journal where she put pictures of things that she wanted. And I've been doing this, I write in a journal because my, my thing is words. So I write in my journal things that I want to happen in the future and I write in present tense, it's already happened. For example, I'll write down something like, well, when I lived in Fairfax County, I wanted to move when my son graduated from high school. I would write down, I'm sitting at my house in Florida and I'm opening the pool and hear the waterfall from spa going into my pool as I overlook the pool I see a lake and trees as I sit on my lanai with the turquoise cushion see how detailed I write so I wrote all of that down in my journal and believe it or not it actually came true you can visualize that kind of stuff as well and I visualize it in something that I call a uh, uh, vision boards before. This is um, a sample of a vision board, and I'll show it to you. This is one of the visions I had when I was living in Virginia, and I wanted to move right here to Anna Maria Island in Florida. This is my word of the year, was fearless, but check this out. So this is created probably about 10, 11 years ago, and as I'm looking at it later, I wanted to live here on this island, and when I moved to Florida, I okay, I want to move, live somewhere here, but I ended up not living on the island, but look at this. Where the star is right here, that's where my house is right now. 
house that wasn't even there yet. It wasn't even built when I created this ends up here. So this actually comes true. And I also put mantra on my vision board as well, something that I strive for. My mantra is elegant, intelligent, healthy, wealthy, and wise. And that's what I want to be. Also, you probably know this handsome man right here. Okay, I wanted a friend. I mean, single, right? And I wanted a boyfriend. He didn't have this, but it's okay if he did. But I like him to like water, and this guy has some ears. So I thought that would be really cute to have, you know, a boyfriend like that. Well, believe it or not, folks, this is my latest vision board. My husband, my new husband, and I'd like you to notice we're by the he has big ears. Isn't that adorable? So your dreams can actually come true with these journals or vision boards. And I invite you just to take out a piece of paper, go online, cut things out of magazines, or you know, Google something, print it out on your printer, put it in a, a vision, just write in your journal. It can help you so much if you're stressed, even if you wake up in the middle of the night. I've got friends telling me, I'm waking up in the middle of the night because it's coping. I'm so upset. I don't know what to do. I get up at two o'clock in the morning and I just can't get back to sleep. I said, Well, what do you do that? We watch TV. Friends are watching TV, mindless TV, and then being good on. I try to watch movies. I said, Well, did you try journaling? Now I've got friends that are journaling and they're creating their futures, which I think is a lot of fun. Some of my written down new goals that they want to do after this over. This is what I want to do. Some people are just getting out all of their angst, you know, everything that they have inside of them. And some people are starting to write books. So what can maybe start as a journal might end up as a book. I've known people that started journals and then they went blogs and those blogs turned in. So one of my friends even had somebody buy off and she got paid a lot of money and it was, well, she was, thrilled about that. So there's some things that you can do with journaling. And I wish you so much luck and fun in your journaling activity. So Lily, thank you so much for letting me share. Laurie, what I really like about what you've just described is that this is something that people can do for themselves. They can do something that is private and it can be as creative as they want. But really what you're talking about is giving people something that's opening up a bigger world. And I really like that. Are there any other points that you'd like to share about why that is something is important to you too? Absolutely. Uh, you're right. It is something that you give yourself. And I don't think anybody's read my journals unless I have said, you know, I'll read something to you. It's something that's personal, I think, unless you want to share it. It's something for yourself. It's something you can give to yourself. It's something that you can help. I always say my mental health, but even my physical health as well. And um, just to get the thoughts out of your head, just to help yourself in some way, a very nice way to do this. And it doesn't even cost any money. You can do it online. You can start putting pictures on a board. Uh, or just start writing. And it's for all ages. I, I don't think there's an age limit. I think is even children can take pictures that they like and like little children can take pictures they like and put them in a book. And I, I think that's a form of journaling as well. And you should see some of my journals, Lily. You can't even read the writing half the time, which is okay because nobody needs to see it but me. Another thing I didn't say, which is interesting, is that you can go back and read your journals after years because a lot of time I catch myself thinking, what was I thinking back then? Well, I can go back to my journals and I could read what I was thinking back then. <laughs> so it's a way also to help, help yourself in the future. Yeah, exactly. I think that um, I have journaled for years. I have done journals where I've also incorporated um, making abstract art that is expressing something. It's not like drawing a picture. It's, it's using a mark making and color um, and form to express something that maybe is too hard to put into words. You know, maybe, you know, if I'm having a bad day, it's easier to have all this sort of discordant um, design happening on a page than writing two pages of what annoys me. Mm -hmm. And what I end up to have coming from that is exactly what you were saying. It is released. 
I have taken something that may be troubling me or something that I'm adoring and I'm putting it outside of me. And when it's something that troubles me, I feel that I've got resolution. When it's something that I'm passionate about, like what you talked about, I feel as if I'm letting it grow. Yeah, absolutely. I love the part where you said you could be as creative as you want. I have friends that uh, are way more creative than I am about drawing and their journals are beautiful with color and this and that. I'm a little envious sometimes. I think, oh, I wish mine would be like that. But no, do you, however you are. And uh, some, uh, some of my friends are, are really good artists, but they're afraid to let their, their artistry show. Mm -hmm. So they practice in their journals, art journals and practice and practice. And when they find something that they're finally proud of, they'll possibly show it to the world. But it's, it's just a place for you. Beautiful, thank you. So Laurie, this has been the most amazing time. I'm so glad that um, you were able to um, peel yourself away from the beautiful um, water and sun. We're near the end, so what, what really, what would you like our viewers to have us some takeaways? Well, the first one is that anybody can do journaling. Anybody can just write down, put um, anything on their paper or the computer. It's something to feed your soul. It's something that's good for you. It's something that you can get out. Um, you can reflect, you can be your inner self, or you can shine, you can be your outer self. Whatever works for you, there's no wrong way to do it. You can't mess this up. It's so much fun once you get going. And remember, nobody needs to see it but you. Take this time for yourself. Be happy, be safe, and really love yourself. Be your best you. Mm. Oh, that's so beautifully said. And I think that we are at a time when there are a lot of people who, because of more time on their hands and not, you know, filling their lives with all of those external distractions, they have the opportunity to reconnect with themselves. And I really feel as if the journaling process, however people want to do it, is a way that people can honour this time that they're having with themselves. They could have one journal that's all about screaming and yelling and you know, I'm not coping with this, but they can have other journals that really are this re-embracing of a, a relationship with self. So um, I want to thank you once again. Um, you have been um, a real pleasure to connect with. And I'd have to say thank you, technology, for making it easy for us to be on uh, many miles apart, but feeling as if we are close. So um, any final words before we sign off? Just thank you, Lily. I really appreciate this, that I can share all of my years journaling with other people and hope that it can make them as happy as it's made me. Wonderful, thank you. So this is Engage at Home. I'm Lily Fisher, your host, and we will see you next time. And remember, Stay calm and smile.